Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hi guys, I hope you're doing really well whenever and wherever you are when you're listening to this particular recording. And I hope that you are following your inner guidance, your inner impetus to move in the direction of your spiritual training that's waiting for you. Everybody has a different path to go down. And for some of you, it's just the religion you were born in and and just getting deeper and deeper into that spirituality. Every major religion has the mystical side to it. Um, Whether you're you're Jewish or Catholic or Muslim, uh, the Sufis in, in Islam are very mystical. Um, but every every uh, religion on earth, um, even Hinduism, has a mystical side. So maybe that's your path, or maybe religion isn't your thing, and that's okay. So some people will pick one thing, and that's where they are forever. You know, like if you do self-realization fellowship, for example, maybe that's your path, and you stick with that, and that's it. Or maybe you go through a bunch of different ones. I myself have gone through many different types of trainings from many different, um, both mystery schools on earth and also I've been trained by a higher guidance a lot of times through my dreams, through uh, past life memories that have come to me at the right moment, through things that people said that led to the reading of a book which led to something else through other people. My spiritual path has been really wide and varied. And I think it's because I needed to know and understand a wide variety of people in order to now do my show and reach a wide variety of people. And I try to meet you where you live as far as your uh, spirituality and divine um, you know, nature is. But I want to encourage you to pay attention to the callings and yearnings that is in your heart. It's a still small voice of God, and if you're not hearing it as a voice yet, you'll be hearing it or feeling it as a desire inside of you. Everybody has, like, I don't know, I guess it's a movement towards divine, and for some of you it's just doing biofeedback and mindfulness. You know, maybe you're a skeptic or maybe you're an atheist and you're not interested in the (laughs) woo-woo of the New Age movement. You're not interested in that, but you are interested in maybe being still or silent. And, you know, meditation can take many different forms. There's many uh, different ways to do it. Like someone contacted me today when I was really happy to hear from him. His name is Prague and he lives in... Los Angeles and he says that he's um, maybe going towards you know a self-realization fellowship I felt it and I mentioned it and he wrote me back and he said that's funny I've been thinking about that and so when you start to think about something and then someone else tells you that's another form of divine telling you that's your path that's your current path doesn't always have to be that it could be something else you know It might be that for a while, and then when you learn what you need to learn from that, you move to another path. But uh, this person said he's been meditating in the Buddhist way, the Nameho Rengekyo, and that is an excellent chant. I don't like the organization that pushes that for wealth creation and abundance, even though it does work. I don't like the way the organization is set up. But I'm not against the actual chant itself. It works, you know, whatever works for you and whatever you feel close to. But, you know, whether you're a Buddhist or a Hindu or just a normal person who wasn't raised in any kind of religion, you're just like going along your day-to-day life and you're kind of living in the mundane world and then one day you wake up and you look to the sky and there's like an angel-shaped cloud or something and you're like, whoa. (laughs) <laughs> and then maybe you just blow it off and then three days later there's another angel-shaped cloud and you're like, oh, you know what I mean? Like sometimes 
you seek the spirituality and sometimes it seeks you. And so I want you to pay attention to the signs all around you because if it's starting to seek you out, you're going to start to notice it more and more. A lot of people got into their spiritual side because they started seeing 1111 everywhere. The angel numbers, that's a huge way that divine gets your attention. You know, sending you 333 or 444 or 222 as messages. You know, first it'll be like you're, you're at the grocery store. Next thing you know, the, the bill comes to $7.77. And you're like, whoa, that's freaky. Then someone will call you and 777 will be in their number. And then all of a sudden a few more days go by and a car will go in front of you and on their license plate. It'll say 777, and you're like, oh, what's going on here? You start looking up numbers, 777, what does that mean? And then all of a sudden you're going to see that there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who've been noticing these angel numbers also. And it's just another way that divine kind of nudges us a little bit. Like, hey, there's more to heaven and earth Horatio that is dreamt of in your philosophy. So whatever it is, whatever uh, way that you need to meet the divine, it's always going to be unique. Your path will always be unique. You know, say two people go to Buddhism. Well, are you going to go to the same Buddhism? Probably not. But are you coming from the same Catholicism or, or Judaism? Probably not. You know, and some people will stick with it or go to a different form of Buddhism or some people will go on to something else. You know, like no two paths in this world are alike and the Hindus say that there are a thousand roads to God you know and that's it's a metaphor there might be more than a thousand you know it might only be 982 <laughs> but no matter what road you want, you're on um, all roads lead back to the divine ultimately because you know our bodies give out after a while and when we pass away we end up in the other realm and we go oh man this stuff was real <laughs> spirituality is real and heaven is real and well that's pretty cool you know I do wonder though about people that are like skeptical and they don't believe in heaven when they die what happens like do they just like cease to be or is that you know or do they actually go to heaven and they're like not they can't believe their eyes I, I wonder I wonder what that experience is like maybe someday I'll try to look into it and and see I'll ask divine about it because it would be very strange to be like in that situation where you're absolutely certain <laughs> your convictions are certain that none of this is real and then all of a sudden you go and then oh I guess it is real <laughs> you know like that would be like a huge shock to the system right so now I'm, now I'm curious about that. <laughs> so I slept really, really, really long today for like nine hours. And I woke up and I was just kind of getting my coffee and getting around for the day late in the afternoon. Darn it. And noticed the sky had been blue with puffy white clouds. So I missed that opportunity to enjoy a beautiful day. In the morning, I was very, very early. I was up and stood in front of the sun and it felt cold. The light of the sun felt cold. Like there was no warmth to it. It was like an LED light. It was very bizarre. But throughout the uh, evening, I've been remembering bits and snippets of being in the Andromeda um, world. So they took me last night after my after the show, and I left for five years. I lived there. <laughs> and it's so weird when I do that because then I remember like I was swimming in a lake. They call it the clean lake. It, it's like they made it, but they made it very natural. Instead of making a swimming pool like we do, they have the clean lakes. That's what they call them. And and people can go and swim there. And so I did that and just cooking in my house and working with herbs and flowers and talking to the people and teaching the children and all the different fun things that they have in their world. And it's such a sweet and innocent world. And I... That's where I was last night in my sleep that I, I left in my astral body and I went to their world and I spent, you know, five years with Puata, my, my Andromeda and companion. And it's such a strange thing. When I come back here, it's so foreign and it feels weird. Like 
feels like I've been gone five years, but I felt extremely well rested. And that's, <laughs> I, I have a really, really hard bed. And it's so, I mean, I surround myself with pillows and I'm just trying to make the best of it. And I'm using it as an impetus to make money and buy my house soon. I'm hoping to buy my house soon because I'm definitely going to buy a comfortable bed when I get there. I'm just renting this apartment and I'm biding my time to get out of here so that I will have, you know, my own place. I don't want to leave here until I have my own place, but you know, I don't hate this apartment. It's actually pretty nice. It's been serving me well. Before this, I was in a very nice high high rise penthouse apartment, an extremely nice apartment, but um it was more expensive. It was like almost $700 a month to live there and when my oldest left, I didn't need the space and I ended up finding a place with a little less space, but still with three bedrooms. It's, it's like bizarre. It's almost the same, <laughs> but it's, uh, I don't have a doorman. I don't have an elevator. <laughs> it's a lot less luxurious and it's in more of a, um, Ecuadorian <laughs> part of town. It's not an expatriate place, you know, and where we were before, there was a lot more expats, not as much as, you know, as other places, you know, there's, there's places where there's two or three blocks and it's only gringos. And I wanted to be more immersed in the culture and the people here. So I'm in an Ecuadorian neighborhood and we, I think we're the only expatriates here actually in this whole neighborhood. I've never run across one person that is from North America or Europe in this neighborhood. It's, it's sometimes I'll see someone and I'll, I'll think that maybe they speak English and I'll say something in English and then they just speak back to me in Spanish and it's like, oh wow, but you're a redhead. <laughs> and I find out later, oh, they're Argentinian. There's a lot of redheads in Argentina. So, um, so it's kind of strange. <laughs> so I don't know. It still feels like home, even though I don't a hundred percent speak the language or understand it. But, um, yeah, it's a strange, it's a strange, uh, I don't even know why I did this, why I became an expatriate, to be honest. <laughs> There's days I question it, but I just think I wanted my mind to myself more and I can go out and pretend I don't speak the language and then I have my mind to myself and it's easier. And that might be why it's being an extreme introvert empath. It's like, I just sometimes want people to believe I don't understand anything and <laughs> let them think I'm dumb or something. And I could move on with my own mind going in its own direction and it's kind of <laughs> mad scientist myself through my life <laughs> where I'm stuck in my head and I don't see my outer environment and it's I've lived like that a lot. It's very strange. But um yeah, but all day long I've been having these bits and snippets of oh wait wait, oh yeah, I just did that, you know, like, oh, I went to that, you know, that festival or, you know, and I, I met a presidential candidate who ended up becoming the president. And, um, it's very weird. I was there five years. They went through a couple different changes of president. I think they were having another election or something when I left or it had just happened or something. I don't know. It's so strange to have memories from something that it just seems so nebulous and unreal, but like, I believe it's real <laughs> and my physical body felt so well rested. I feel like I wasn't even in my body. Like I wasn't in pain. I wasn't whatever, but I think I was crying when I had to leave and come back here and I woke up, my eyes were swollen like I've been crying in my sleep again and it's like what and I think I just sleep but I feel like I had a vacation I felt like I was gone for five years it's so weird <laughs> oh my life my life is so strange all right guys I'm gonna get in to our Schumann resonance news uh on disclosurenews.it they write at only the evening report they wrote today after a pause of about 12 hours at midnight, UTC, slight variations began around 13 o'clock. <laughs> 13 o'clock. The two strongest peaks of the day were evicted. 
They didn't pay their rent, so we evicted them. <laughs> I'm sure that means something different in Italian, and then their translation wasn't. All right, around 13 o'clock, the two strongest peaks of the day were evicted. <laughs> 35 hertz and 37 hertz. The entity of the variations began then to go down until it reached again calm at 13 UTC. So that's where they say 13 o'clock. It was the strongest peaks, and then it was calm at 13 o'clock. I don't know. (laughs) I I don't know what's going on there, but (laughs) whoever wrote this, they just weren't. Maybe it's just really good weed. I, I don't know. I'm not high. I think they were, though, when they wrote this. But basically, the nuts and bolts of that report are they had two peaks at 35 and 37 hertz frequency so going to heartmath.org we look at California they were at 128 hertz frequency at midnight and went up only by 3 to 123 by 4 a.m. in Hofuf in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia they were at 98 hertz frequency on the Schumann resonance scale and from 98, they went down to 91 by 4 a.m. Again, at midnight in Lithuania, they started off at 161 hertz frequency, and they went down to 149 by 4 a.m. And in Alberta, Canada, they went up to 210. That's quite a leap from yesterday. 210 hertz frequency at midnight, and they went down to 202 by 4 a.m., and in Northland, New Zealand, they were at 87 hertz frequency at midnight and only went down by 4 to 83 hertz frequency at 4 a.m. And in Halului, South Africa, they started off at 199 hertz frequency and by 4 a.m. they were down to 183. So that pretty much states that for the past day, or at least for the first four hours of today, all of the Hertz frequencies are well, well, well into the fifth dimension, the bottom rung of which starts off at 40 Hertz frequency. I can't say the same for Italy because they were not not quite there, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what that means, honestly. It's like if, if they're just getting little teeny tiny peaks that are less than 40 Hertz, does that mean that Italy itself is not in the fifth dimension? I mean, can parts, bits and pieces and parts of our world be in and out, others out? Uh, Something to think about, right? (laughs) All right. Uh, I had to have my tea. Sorry about that, guys. All right. We are in A Course in Miracles in Lesson 108. And this is uh, the foundation for inner peace. You can go ahead and go to acim.org, or if you want to go over to um, your your Play Store, whether it's iTunes or Google, you could go ahead and download any number of A Course in Miracles apps and take the lessons. They are highly recommended very deeply uh, spiritual and that could be that might be your only spirituality I mean seriously if you just do this course and nothing else that would be good enough you know for like a whole year like that will keep you going and really solidify your um, connection with the divine for sure so anyway we are today on lesson 108 and that is to give and to receive our one in truth. To give and to receive our one in truth. Vision depends upon today's idea. The light is in it, for it reconciles all seeming opposites. And what is light except the resolution, born of peace, of all your conflicts and mistaken thoughts into one concept, which is wholly true. 
Even that one will disappear because the thought behind it will appear instead to take its place. And now you are at peace forever, for the dream is over then. True light that makes true vision possible is not the light is not the light the body's eyes behold. It is a state of mind that has become so unified that darkness cannot be perceived at all. And thus, thus what is the same is seen as one, while that what is not the same remains unnoticed, for it's not there. So I'm not going to read the rest of this one, but the practice periods for today is you just say, to give and to receive are one in truth. I receive what I am giving now. To everyone I offer quietness. To everyone I offer peace of mind. To everyone I offer gentleness. And so on. So basically, uh, the, the main idea today is to give and to receive are one in truth. So there you have it. Um, let's see where are we at. Uh, I'd like to be connected to my higher guidance. Muscle testing says yes, I'm connected. Do I have permission to ask where we are on the Ascension Symptom Scale today? Yes. Are we below 99? Yes. Are we above 95? Yes. Are we above 97? No. Are we at 97? No. Are we at 96? Yes. Today we're at 96 on the Ascension Symptom Scale. I did a um. I think I did a, a muscle testing episode, if you want to know about kinesiology. I find that it works very well. I use pendulum dowsing sometimes and muscle testing just as a secondary um, confirmation. When I get a divine message, I want to make sure it's not my subconscious mind trying to please my ego or something. <laughs> you know? And so I'm just always working on that making sure that I'm clear and that I'm receiving clear and abundant messages. And for the most part, I think I am, you know, the channel is only as good as, is the clarity of the channeler. So in a moment, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read tarot for the collective. And I haven't figured out exactly what the topic is. But I think it's going to be um, for us, for the new moon. I think that's, I'm looking it up right now, make sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so I think it's for, okay, yeah. So the new moon is on um, Friday, or, well, it's on Saturday. So I wanted to get the new moon reading out tonight so that you guys know what to be prepared for on Saturday. And I think... Let me ask, higher guidance, do you want me to do this on spirituality? Do you want me to do this on finances and career? No. Do you want me to do this about business? Do you want me to do this about health and well-being? Do you want me to do this about mental health and mental well-being? Yes. Okay. So tonight's reading is going to be about mental health and mental well-being. And I'm going to just do a Celtic cross reading. And see where we all are at. Like, you know, we haven't done a reading in a couple weeks, I believe. So we will see. We are going to have a brand new moon, which is another awakening. It's another beginning. Um, it's a good time to start anew, start fresh projects on Saturday. Which is cool. Actually, you know what? I bought some wooden spoons, and I. This sounds weird, but I've been really because I don't like the way that wooden spoons, when they're new, feel in your hand. It's kind of weird. Has I don't like the texture of it. So I'm gonna paint them, and I'm thinking I'm gonna paint them various shades of pale turquoise and white, and then I'm gonna paint little um, flowers on them to make them really pretty and unique. So that's my, my little project. <laughs> that's going to be my little project um, <laughs> for the weekend. And then I'm going to clean up my um, desk. I started painting. I'm going to break it out and I'm going to start painting again because I really enjoy, I really enjoy um, painting and doing my art. And I'm going to put the Ho'oponopono 
on my desk, which will increase the vibration of it. And when you do that, and, and again, the Ho'oponopono process, I did a whole episode on it. If you haven't listened, go back and listen to it. But it's the four phrases, and you say them to God. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And a man, uh, Dr. Haleakala Hulin in Hawaii, used this method to heal every single person in a criminally insane asylum and he healed the people so good that the asylum had to shut down because there were no patients left. <laughs> he healed every single one of them with this. So it's incredibly powerful. And I have a degree, or I guess certification, in this. Um, just both the normal level and the advanced level certification in Ho'oponopono. And I've found it be, to be very helpful. And the artwork is if you do artwork, so I don't know if you feel like doing art, you know, whether it's just coloring a piece of paper and taping it to the wall or putting a magnet on it and putting it against the refrigerator, you know, it's like one of those things that if you, um, use it, you're going to see like a massive difference in the, your energetic space and in your life. And I've used it to clean up a lot of things from other people to, I mean, I've had, I had neighbors that were not doing very well and they, and I put the artwork on the wall where we shared a wall in our apartment building. And next thing I know, everything in their lives went smoothly and well, and they got better and they ended up living in a better apartment. They ended up moving because they ended up having more money. And in another instance, I had neighbors that were planning on robbing me and I could hear them speaking very loudly talking about how they were going to come in and maybe kill us and take our laptops (laughs) in Spanish. They were like, you know, calling us stupid because we don't speak Spanish. And so I, (laughs) I did the Ho'oponopono and I put artwork on the walls and within a month they were gone. They actually, within two weeks they were gone. They left, they um, just left in the middle of the night, like thieves in the night. And they, um, They never came back and they didn't pay their rent and they were like, the landlord's like, it's weird, they just moved out without saying goodbye. I'm like, yeah, I saw them trying to jimmy open your door and they were talking about stealing um, stuff out of your, they were like going to look for money and use his own money to pay their rent, you know. And um, I don't know, it was like crazy. I screamed in Spanish that I was a soldier and I'll be ready for them, which I'm not and never have been, but I wanted to scare them so they wouldn't attack my kids. You know, it was like really crazy. I'm like, why are these people yelling in Spanish what they're going to do to me? As if I, and I told them I'm not stupid. I understand Spanish fully, which I said in Spanish to them. (laughs) And I said, people on the roof, I can hear you, you know. (laughs) So I'm just like, some people are really, really, really dumb, you know. But but I used Ho'oponopono and I got rid of bad neighbors that way and I've used it to heal other neighbors that deserve the healing and I and, and when you use it it's like literally it just goes to God you know it's up to God to, to fix it however He will fix it but I've used it to heal land I've used it to um, energetically clear the space of an apartment that had a weird energy or vibe I've I've used it in a lot of different ways over the years and it's just been always super helpful I use it for my own anxiety I use it for um, my own life I've used it to bring money to me when I was very low on money when I was scared I use that to heal the fear and then I used it to heal the fact that I don't have the money um, so it's, it's an extremely helpful thing so if you do want to look into Ho'oponopono you can go back and listen to my episode on it and learn exactly what to do and how to do it and why those phrases are important and in what manner do you use the phrases? And anyway, but I'm thinking about doing, I'm thinking about putting some art in my house, um, doing art again. I, I've done this in Peru. I've done this in California. I've done it in a lot of different places, and it's always incredible the way it works. Um, it's like pretty rapid too, actually. So. Um, Well, anyway, there's that. So I'm going to take a quick break, and when I come back, I'm going to read Tarot for the Collective for the New Moon as it pertains to our collective mental health and well-being right after this.
If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's high time you did. It is the absolute easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's absolutely free. Second of all, they have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. You guys have known that I've been doing this for eight months using the Anchor.fm app right on my cell phone, and I have done it everywhere, right? I have recorded this in my living room, my bedroom, little cafes in Quito, Ecuador, all over Cuenca. It's so absolutely easy to make your podcast and editing is just a snap. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you. And it took me about two and a half months to become syndicated. And now I'm available on Spotify, Apple podcast, and many more and so can you you can make money from your podcast also and there's no minimum requirement you get paid from your very first listener it is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place so please if you are interested in making a podcast of your very own do not hesitate to start with anchor Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Do you ever wish you could look into the next chapter in your book of life and see what's coming next? What does the universe have in store for you? I can help you with that. I will give you a Celtic cross reading, which is 10 cards, or you can ask me three questions, and I use three cards per question. So that's nine cards, or I can channel your higher guidance, or maybe God directly for you. Maybe you want to talk to your dear departed Aunt Edna because maybe you have a few questions and she was the smartest person you knew. If your deceased relatives are available or your ascended masters, I can channel them for you personally. Let me have one hour to show you the future in your next chapter of your book of life. Readings are $75 and it takes me an hour to an hour and a half to complete. And for this price, you will also be hooked up to the healing grid around the planet for free, which means yours truly, me, I will be giving you Reiki 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the rest of your life. All you have to do is let me know, metaphysicalsoulspeak at gmail.com, and we will explore your future together. All right, guys, I have the cards in my hand. I'd like to be connected to Divine Creator. Prime Creator, and this is for the collective whole, for all of humanity, for the new moon. What is our overall mental health going to be like starting on Saturday? And I've got to keep, um, I have to shuffle a little bit more, so I already did it four times. I tend to do it seven. I've already slapped the deck. (laughs) Slapping the deck three times will get out any residual energy from the last reading. Not necessarily get rid of negative energy, just to get rid of old old energy, just in case. I always slap the deck at the end of a reading and again at the beginning of the next one. All right, um, Archangel Raphael, I'd like to ask you, because you are the angel of health, you are the one I'd like to be connected with you. Am I connected to Prime Creator? Yes, Muscle Testing says yes. Am I connected to Archangel Raphael? Yes. 
Okay, Archangel Raphael, I need you to pull the card out. That means where are we in general right now, our present situation? And I'd like you to just pull that out for Prime Creator. Oh, I love it. The cards are already active immediately. It's always the best thing, man. Oh, of course, there's some cards that are turned around inside the deck. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how that happens because I'm pretty careful. It's just they are so active. Is this the card for the present situation? Nice. The hanged man. Great. All right. Um, the, not the other two? Okay, great. Now, what is below us? What is the foundation of the collective whole situation as far as our mental? How, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Not the foundation. I forgot card two. <laughs> foundation is card three. Uh, what crosses us? What is our biggest challenge or and our opportunity at this moment. What is on our mind? The thing that brings us out of the present situation. Is it this card here? All right. <laughs> that was the 10 of cups. So I was like, ooh. <laughs> For a minute, is this the card? Oh, I've got to put my glasses on here. Um, is this the card that crosses us right now king of swords uh all right hmm what is our foundation what is the card that is below us is it this is it one of these three cards that's below us no all right good it's a bunch of swords oh let's see what is our foundation of our current mental health situation for the state of the world collective humanity right now what is the state of our mental health as far as our foundation? What, what is the foundation of the present situation? Archangel Raphael, please pull out that one card. <laughs> or five cards that just fell. <laughs> um, any day now. Please pull out the main card for the foundation of our current situation. Again, this is for the mental health, the collective whole. Is this the card? Oh, nine of cups. All right, that's it. That's good. Um, I'd like to now ask for you to pull out the card please for what is immediately behind us what have we already left okay like 30 cards just fell out of the deck what have we left what's behind us does that mean we left we left 30 things behind us in the past week or three months is it this this card huh really the lovers is behind us that's weird what is our um what is above us what message does our higher self have for us or what is above us right now? That's the card I'm getting or asking for right now. Oh goodness. Is it this? Great. Eight of swords. Hmm. Is that really the card for right now? Okay. I'm getting a no. Putting it back in the deck now. What is the message from our higher self? Oh my god, a whole bunch just flew out. Again, all right. Is the lover's card really what's behind us, Archangel Raphael? That's what Prime Creator said. Okay, Prime Creator, please tell Archangel Raphael to pull the correct card from the deck for what is the message from our highest guidance right now. Our higher guidance. Oh my gosh. These cards are just so slippery. They're like, it's like trying to hold on to a bunch of fish when my hands are covered in olive oil. <laughs> Well, the fish are still alive. Okay, I don't know. That's a really weird thing that came up. I don't like fishing. I don't like eating fish, but I've had, I've had to catch fish, and they're pretty slippery. All right, <laughs> what's what is above us? What is above us as far as what's the message from our higher guidance? What is our advice from our higher guidance right now for the collective whole, as far as our mental health is concerned? Oh, great. Here we go. Literally, like, ten cards flow, flew out in three different directions. All right. Archangel Raphael, please pull out the card. 
for what is above us. What is our message from our higher guidance? Is it this card here? No. All right. <laughs> that was the safe cowboy card. <laughs> or the safe gentleman. Is a knight card, I thought. Is it this? No. All right. Ugh. It's like, oh my gosh, it takes forever sometimes for a card to come out. Is it one of these cards? The answer is no. Archangel Raphael, are you there still? <laughs> the answer is yes. Please pull out the card from our higher guidance. Is this it? Okay, this is the King of Wands. King of Wands. That is a king? Yes. All right. I'm in my bedroom. I'm more comfortable doing the reading in here, but I can't see the cards. And I have my glasses on, my cheaters, my reading glasses I got in Peru at the witch market. <laughs> Outside the witch market. And, um... It's like I'm going to have to use my flashlight and my other phone just to see the cards. It's lighting in here is really horrible. All right. What is coming up in the next week for the collective whole? What can we expect on a mental health level for the collective whole in the next week? Oh, goodness. All right. What can we expect in the next week mentally? All right. Is this the card here? It came shooting out with a bunch of cards put back in the deck and it came shooting out again. Like, really, the Ten of Wands. It says self-confidence and there's a million eyes on it. <laughs> it's a weird card, man. It's such a weird card. Okay, what? How? how do we tend to see ourselves in this current situation, mental health-wise? Archangel Raphael, please pull that card out. Prime Creator, please help us with that. High Priestess, that's good. Sacerdote. Mujer Sacerdote, is that what it says on here? La Sacerdotista. <laughs> that's the Spanish word for High Priestess. Okay, um, how do other people view us mentally? Especially people that are asleep. But, you know, that's when I say the collective whole. I mean... The awakened ones. So how do the unawakened ones view the awakened ones from a mental health perspective? Okay, got the tower shooting off to the right and a million cards off to the left. Where, um, okay, just one card I need. That's four cards. One card. <laughs> Please give me the answer of how the sleeping ones see the awakened ones, awakening ones. Is this it? Yeah, okay, the devil. Lovely. Is this really our card? So they see us as the devil. <laughs> Great. Lovely. <laughs> All right, what's for the collective whole mentally, mental health speaking, for the next three months? Also, that represents our fears and our hopes. So what are our fears and hopes and or what's happening in the next three months for the collective whole on a mental health level? Is this one of the cards? The answer is no. Come back in the deck. Keep going. I'm getting a really weird memory of a dream I had like three years ago. I was going down a highway and I was feeling very emotionally uncomfortable. I'm getting that feeling right now from that dream. Ooh. It was like I was driving at night on a lonely road, like in Arizona or California or something, in the desert, and I was by myself, and I knew I was about to get abducted, and I didn't know if I could trust them or not. That was the dream. <laughs> and I was completely alone, and I was terrified in the dream, and I woke up in a cold panic, and that's it. that's the energy I'm getting right now. All right, so is this it? Four of Wands perfection. I have never gotten this one before, ever. This is how we're going to... This is our hopes and our fears card, and the next three months is perfection. Well, that's a really beautiful card. Yeah. Okay, what is in our next six months, mental health-wise, as well, for the Collective Hall, as well as 
the final outcome of this entire reading. Okay. And that's it. There's all she wrote. Hey, uh, Queen of Pentacles. Well, that's super great. Pentacles always mean money. Queen means you're in charge. So that's always great. Okay. Slap the deck. <laughs> What's left? All right. I'd like to connect with Prime Creator, and I'm going to ask um, Prime Creator's um, two cents on these cards as well as... I'm going to look up the meaning in the Rider Weight deck. Okay. All right, God, I'd like to be connected with you and like to ask, what is the hanged man? That's our current situation. And I'd like to ask, what is our message from you? You are at this time to get as still as possible, quiet your mind and feel the love within you. Connect to your deepest reaches and regions of your spirituality, deep in the caverns of your mind and inside of your heart chambers. You are being called forth and asked at this moment to breathe deep live in stillness, live inside that deep, vast knowledge that's inside of you that you might have up until this point been ignoring. Is there anything else to add to that? The answer is no. All right, I'm going to look. The hanged man. For your information, if you don't have a tarot deck and you've not seen um, this card, it might sound a little scary, the words hanged man. <laughs> um, he's not hanging by his neck. It's not like a punishment or like in the old Wild West days. It's actually, he's upside down. He has his hands behind his back. He, he He's tied by one ankle. Um, and he's in, he's suspended in limbo or bliss. He's fully illumined in this moment. He's not worried about the material world, and his ha he has his his uh, right leg is crossing his left leg in the shape of an upside down four, and four is relating to the emperor, who is the master of his domain. Um, he surveys the land that he has earned for himself. He's like the king, and he's in charge of everything, and he's the king of materialness. So this is because it's a hanged man. He's upside down. So he is the king of spirituality in this moment. So in a way it's the emperor transformed through becoming enlightened and awakened. So what it says here, uh, in the Rider Waite app, which is free, um, by the way, it's an excellent app. <clears throat> it says the hanged man, new perspective, selflessness, flexibility, serenity, serenity. Now <laughs> I remember that episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> All right. It generally shows that you're now at a crossroads. You are with two options in or out, up or down. Yes or no. You might find yourself very much wanting to do something, but you don't have any idea what it is or well, how to do it. <laughs> So this is a clear sign you need to stop, relax, and look at the ways you might need to let go of attempts to control your life or your situation, your people, your things. <laughs> so it says, um, it's, a, it's possible there's an outdated attitude or wish that you need to let go of. Any sacrifice that you make will open up your life to something even more positive than what you let go of. So all in all, this should be a thoughtful, reflective time, particularly if you're willing to look at it or if or how you might best serve your own interests by being willing to change. 
So that is our current situation, mental health wise. Now what crosses us is the King of Swords. And it says the King of Mental Clarity, the Ray of Claridad Mental in Spanish, or otherwise known as Kolya Kapak in Incan. For all those of you that speak Incan, which is like nobody, right? Has a yod on it, the open hand of God in Hebrew on the card. Um, also Libra, which is balanced. And it looks like a hay on there, but I can't tell. All right, it has a number 50, if that means anything to any of you. So, King of Swords. Um, all right, we're going to look this up. Oh, yeah, this one goes different. I'm, like, looking this up, and it's like, wait. All right, you tell what God says first, and then we'll see what the King of Swords has to say. Um, all right, God, can you tell us what is crossing us at this moment? A lot of you at this point have ethical decision-making to do. Um, and so what he's showing me is some of you are looking for a new car, and you're starting to worry that maybe you should get an electric vehicle versus or hybrid vehicle instead of a, um, you know, normal like gas vehicle, you know, so it's like decisions like that, you know, like what's good for you, what you need for your world and your life versus what is good for humanity and the environment and planet as a whole. So these kind of kinds of decisions are weighing heavily. Some of you are worried about recycling, whether you should recycle, whether it's going to make a difference. Are we really at the um, point of no return now? And, you know, God says, yeah, we are. God, does it matter if people buy an electric vehicle versus a normal car? If this, if he's saying at this point, no, it doesn't even matter. We're already at the point of no return. New things are going to come to replenish the oxygen. Don't worry. So, yeah, he's just saying, don't worry about it. But so what else does this have to say? You know, a lot of you are struggling with decisions that will affect your spirituality and your spiritual life and taking jobs that are the opposite of spirituality and continuing to work in jobs in op that, that feel like that in opposition directly to who you are spiritually. But it's okay to live a dichotomy if you know who you truly are. You know, if you really need the money, don't quit because it goes against your spirituality unless it's deeply unethical or you're working for somebody who is deeply unethical. And if it hurts your, whatever the decision is, if it's something that when you think about it, it hurts your heart chakra then immediately get away from the thing that hurts you. If it's something that you might not 100% resonate with, but it's not hurting you, it's okay at this moment to stay inside that, but always look for better ways to renew and replenish your own energy and better ways to express yourself while earning the living that you want when this is concerning your job. So... Um, bring yourself to a position in which your decision making is in alignment with your higher self and we urge you at this time to always be connected to your spiritual team your spiritual guidance your holy guardian angel your higher self and your spiritual guide because these are the waters that need to be navigated with the help of spiritual aid the mental health crisis that many of you face, whether it's an, an acute crisis or just a mild spiritual crisis at this moment, it's because you are learning and growing rapidly spiritually and you're more and more aware every day of how things in your day-to-day -day life are or are not lining up with your brand new spiritual values. So you need to take a deep breath and get back to your center. And that's why the hanged man is first.
just meditate on it. And if it's something you could keep doing without hurting your heart, that's okay. And, and if you have to change, the changes will be brought to you. The decisions will be made and you're not going to ever be unloved based on a decision that you make because you have free will. So basically, if God can live with it, so, you know, if you can live with it, God can live with it. So, um, all right, King of Swords. I'm going to look this one up now. It says in the Rider Waite deck, precision, rationality, articulation, and ethical and discerning are the words associated with this card. The King of Swords often stands in for a powerful, opinionated, forceful man in the querent's life. He will often but not always have hair on the darker side of the spectrum. You might be tempted to think only about how things affect you personally, particularly when this card doesn't represent a man in your life. But consider the feelings of others before you act. That could be another interpretation of the card. So it says, in general, um, the King of Swords points to a very forceful energy. You might not be able to get a man in your life to change his mind or to do what you want, you might need to change something major about your own behavior. You know, if it's not an actual person in your life, um, you might want to change something about your behavior, your thoughts, your expectations, but don't overextend your reach. So there it is. So what is below us is the nine of cups. This is also our foundation. And so we're going to have to see what this one's about. All right. Prime Creator, do you want to talk about this one? Yes. Okay. Many of you have begun the, the long journey and process of 100% accepting pure and total love and compassion into your life. And at this moment, your lives are filled with love, even if you're not able to see it due to mental constraints at the moment. The love is always there for you. This is your always your platform. It is the most important thing in the universe. It is what I myself am created from. And this is how I created you is with love. And you are at your foundation and your core and at your soul. You are love and nothing more. Love is the most powerful, most inspirational, most beautiful emotion out of all of the emotions. In when it's personal or impersonal, it still is very deep and very beautiful. We encourage you to allow it into your life in a way that you are ruled by the guidance of love. Before you make a decision, ask, does this bring the most love to the most amount of people? Anything else? No. Okay. All right. So nine of cups stands for happiness, wishes fulfilled, sensual pleasure, ooh la la, and bliss. The Nine of Cups is one of the most uplifting, pleasant cards to receive in a reading, known often as the wish card. <laughs> it can mean that what you are hoping for or dreaming about most is very likely to be yours in a brief period of time, generally, too. Yay, I'm going to have money in red licorice. <laughs> <laughs> Twizzlers make smiles happy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it's like not even keto, dag <laughs> Uh In general, the appearance of this card is usually a portent of happiness and good things about to come. It also means that what you want is likely to come into being in your life. If asking a yes or no type question, the card is the most powerful indicator of yes but likely everything else in the tarot that is not carved, of course, in stone. So that is our foundation. Our foundation is pure love, baby. <laughs> All right. Now, this is weird. We've left behind the lover's card. And I've been single the whole time. I left behind my lover. Is that the problem? Oh, goodness. All right. This is has a symbol of Gemini on it, Mercury 17 and well, yeah, Gemini I keep thinking my twin flame is a Gemini I really want him to call me 
<laughs> if you're a Gemini and you're single and you think possibly, <laughs> possibly, and a good friend of mine told me you have something to do with France, whether you do business there or live there part time or what. A long time ago, this man told me that my guy has something to do with France. I'm like, that's interesting. All right. God, do you want to talk just about why the lovers is now behind us? Many of you have really stopped seeking out your twin flame and your perfect soulmate, one true love. A lot of you have opted instead mentally to just focus on yourself, your friends, your family, your immediate people in your life. A lot of you have, well, basically given up. This isn't necessarily a bad thing because it's when you stop trying to grasp onto something that it will come back freely to you. So the idea of the lovers and having a perfect sex life and relationship and romance and all of that stuff, mentally, a lot of you are starting to outgrow these ideas that related to the 3D world. You're outgrowing the ideas that these um, attachments were the end all be all now that you're learning more about your spirituality and you're leaving a lot of it behind. And this doesn't mean that there's going to be a lot of divorces suddenly or a lot of breakups, but a lot of you are just over looking and looking and looking and looking and sweating it. And, you know, because you're gaining a higher octave of love and a higher perspective of love in general. And as your 11th chakras are starting to open, you are, becoming more loving and compassionate towards all people on earth. And you realize that as you love, the love will come back to you. And as you fend for yourself and love yourself, if you're single and you treat yourself the way you want to be treated, the more you'll just draw your one true love to you versus seeking and seeking and seeking and going out and dating sites and dating this and dating that and speed dating and all that crap. Like a lot of people mentally are just over it completely. And as you let go of all the old worn out ideas of marriage and relationships and expectations in society, once you're getting over all that, you're starting to see more of what your needs are, like the intimacy that you seek. And you're over just looking, looking, looking like, that's how I feel. And if you're in a relationship, what do we tell to people that are already in a relationship? You are leaving behind the ideas of the past and you're learning to love each other anew in a brand new, higher perspective way. And this is more deep and more fulfilling and definitely more spiritual. So the idea of just sex for sex sake isn't really appealing to the majority of the collective right now. It's more about the making love, having intimacy, having a deep and abiding friendship, looking into each other's eyes in a higher way and seeing each other as, well, basically the sparks of God that you are versus looking at each other with lust and excitement and all the stuff that was lower level energy. Not to say that a healthy amount of sensuality and lust isn't, isn't good for a relationship because it can be, but when it's coupled with true love and trust and intimacy and, and the higher octaves of this, that's what the people are looking for now in their lives. So let's see where we at. Uh, now, this card means union, sharing, trust, and attraction. The lovers is associated with the astrological astrological sign of Gemini, the twins. Almost always points to partnerships with just one other person, but generally, not surprisingly, indicates a romantic pri um, partnership. But, of course, it's not always the case. Less frequently, it points to the duality that all of us have inwardly, male, female, yin, yang, approach, avoidance, and the like. When this card peer, appears, you might be feeling ambivalent about a relationship or situation in your life. Um, whether or not you have a relationship could be the year ambivalent about not having that. 
It could be that your heart is telling you one thing and your head is telling you another. <laughs> Classic Gemini dilemma. In general, the thing to do within the bounds of your morality is to follow your heart. Some people say there are only two modes that any of us operate under at any time, fear or love, but when you can, choose love. And, and that points also to your foundation, of course. So, all right, King of Wands is what's above us. Um, I'd like to ask um, higher guidance. What does this hold for us? What is our message from our higher, higher guidance? You may or may not be feeling confusion in your lives in some ways or the dichotomy of the worlds as worlds are doing the opposite of colliding at this moment. They are abiding by the one, the will of the one and you are moving towards the attraction and law of the one. And as you move into that higher octave, you're going to find a lot of inspiration and ideas you're going to be sparked in a multitude of ways and creativity will start to abound and your higher guidance would like to express to you that you need to feel your divinity at this moment. You need to step into your spiritual maturity. You are divine nobility. You are like divine Kings and the King of wands points to that. So basically we want you to know that you are inspiration personified in these days and you look to others for inspiration while they look to you for inspiration and you bounce ideas and inspiration and creativity off of each other at this moment. So we wish for you to be very aware of any and all ideas, maybe write it down in a notebook when you get a little little nudge to do something because that might be the thing that you need to push you in the direction of your dreams where you can fulfill your higher purpose at this moment. All right. So according to the writer weight deck, they say warmth, generosity, nobility, strength, and leadership often associated with the astrological sign of Sagittarius the King of Wands signifies wise, open, positive, adventurous, masculine energy. As with all court cards, a king can indicate a literal person or someone with light hair. <laughs> uh, when the king appears, you're likely to have an abundance of energy and you are inclined to use this in a very positive direction. Now, in general, this is a positive omen. Even when he doesn't represent a literal person in your life, he signifies that men around you, whether you're a man or a woman, are generally supportive and they think well of you. You will be feeling ambitious and goal-oriented, and furthermore, you will have the wherewithal to accomplish what you have in mind, so think positively at this time. So the next card, what's in front of us, and also that represents what is coming in the next week, this is the Ten of Wands. This is a really bizarre card because it, I mean, from this particular deck because of all the eyeballs on it. There's like a million eyes on it. It's so weird. I don't know why it does that. Why? So, um, it is a positive card though. <laughs> it doesn't mean that people are going to be, uh, you know, watching or something. So it says auto confidence on it. There's a, a Sagittarius again with the travel and Sagittarius. Um, I mean, Sagittarius always means travel. There's a reference to God on there. Um, 26 is, um, it doesn't mean father. I think 40 means father and 26 is, um, might mean the sun. It's a very sacred number in Hebrew. All right, so is there anything you want to add or say about this one? God, Ten of Wands, it's related to the Wheel of Fortune. In this moment, not only are you going to be able to see where your fortune will be coming from, you're going to be able to see the good luck in all the aspects of your life. And as far as the illuminating 
feature of the wands. This is also related. The wands, this one and the last wands card you got represents what wands do is they light your path, they light your way. And so these two cards are relating to the illumination and the pathway you seek as far as your spirituality is concerned. But you're going to be going forward um, boldly with confidence. You are going to protect yourself mentally and emotionally while you are exploring who you are creativity, creatively and you're going to be very energetic and positive. And the more you are sticking true to your own path and the more you forge your own path that you know you must take and you trust yourself and you trust the universe to bring to you what you need, the more you're going to find yourself in a situation where you're becoming more and more successful and more and more positive. And you're not going to be able to help yourself. It's just going to be amazing and everything's going to be great and easy. But you have to have that faith in yourself. And it's, it's likely to come very quickly, very rapidly at this time. Is there anything else? Okay, so mentally, mental health-wise, we're in a good place in the next week. It says fortification, determined, discipline, and self-protection in the Rider weight deck. Um, this is a very positive card, but as you move towards um, the higher cards in the suit, there's more complexity and difficulty indicated in the wands. The nine of wands is where someone would say that this kind of trend begins. So it can indicate anxiety and worry and being burdened and keyed up over concerns. But in general, it comes up that the first and best step is often to take a deep breath and calm down. Well, that makes sense. That's why God said it refers back to the hanged man, right? <laughs> Which is taking a deep breath and calming down. Don't let things that you're worried about overwhelm you. Take it one day at a time, one hour at a time. Yeah, un día la vez, one day at a time. I love that. I love that show. Okay. If you must, uh, at least some of your worries are very likely to turn out to be imaginary. You know, you're never upset for the reason you think. Get very, sp get very specific on what you're afraid of or pick it apart. What is the true likelihood of the worry actually happening? Comfort yourself, and if you need help, don't hesitate to ask. Asking for help is the mark of a strong person. All right, speaking of strong person, we're seeing ourselves as the high priestess at this moment so God do you want to say something about that you are sitting on the thrones of your own spiritual enchantment at this moment you have taken your energies back into yourself and you see yourself as being strong and you're saying but yet trepidatious a little bit on your path so mentally you might not be 100% sure of your path you just know that you have a path. And for many of you, the idea that you finally have a spiritual path is of great comfort to you because many of you, you just didn't think you were spiritual actually. And you weren't really feeling it. It wasn't feeling authentic for you and you hadn't quite awakened. And a lot of you are brand new to the show and you're brand new to the awakening life. And so now you know you do have a path. You might not even know what path it is. It's just you know that it's spiritual and it's yours. And so the high priestess is, she's in charge of memory. She is the bear, bearer and caretaker of your Akashic records. She is a virgin, meaning she does not think about sex. That is not her focus. And that kind of, you know, we left the lovers behind. So this is a good another good indication that we are becoming new and fresh and innocent as we go out on our spiritual paths. Is there anything else? No. Okay. High priestess goes like this. Uh, intuition, inner wis wisdom, esoteric knowledge, and insight, according to the Rider Waite deck. Um, she's a very spiritual card and often with sexual overtones. It can mean that the querent is in a phase where he or she is going to be much more physically attractive to others. 
She is tied to the moon, femininity, and inspiration. This is a time to rely on your intuition and your inner knowledge rather than your conscious mind or intellect. Pay attention to your dreams. Synchronicities are likely now. When the high priestess appears in a man's reading, she's often representing a woman that he will want badly. <laughs> but he might not be able to get her. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, and that's all it says. It doesn't say if it's in a woman's reading, what does it mean? <laughs> I I don't know. I think if it's in a woman's reading, she would mean that you're either contemplating um, your own sexuality and sensuality, or you might be rethinking it. And I think that it could go either way with the high priestess because she is a virgin. Sexuality does play a role in this card, but it's usually like likely to either take a back seat or become more of a pure and innocent venture, you know, instead of sleeping around with a lot of people and spreading your energy around it's more like, okay, now I'm going to be on the straight and narrow and have one person only. Um, you know, it could indicate stuff like that, basically. Well, and here we have another sexual card. So this is the third one in the deck that is sexual. Um, how other people are seeing us, the devil card, card of the devil. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right, well, you know, the door to hell is always open. So <laughs> the card of the devil, usually he has his hands up and he's doing the sign that, well, some of you might think of as Nanu Nanu. <laughs> and some of you might think of the sign as Live Long and Prosper, which is by Spock. Spock does have devil ears. And he looks rather devilish, devilish doesn't he? And he's all about the material world. He is a scientist. And so um, Gene Ronberry did fashion Spock based on the devil card in the tarot. I don't know if he knew that, but <laughs> I think he did that consciously. He's a very spiritual man because his writing was very spiritual. But the, the devil is a materialist. He only, that live long and prosper symbol, also Nanu Nanu to Mork from Ork, Robin Williams' first role in a TV show <laughs> uh, in the 70s, long freaking time ago. I never missed an episode. Um, basically, the devil card means that you are... How people are seeing us, it's not that they're seeing us as the devil, but they're, they're seeing us from a materialistic viewpoint. That live long prosper means all you see is all there is. So people that are asleep can't see past that materialism when they see us. So they just, like if we're meditating, they might think that we're napping because we're doing drugs or resting. You know, they don't, they don't understand that we're communing with the divine, right? So it might, we might look like crazy, you know, like, like maybe look like hell, <laughs> literally, you know, but we're not really it's not what they're, um, <laughs> it's not what they are understanding or aware of. So God, do you want to add anything to this? A lot of people that see you that they, when they're asleep and they see you and you're becoming more and more illumined, you're becoming more enlightened and you're gathering more spiritual energy. People that are materialistic or not awake yet interpret this falsely as sexuality so a lot of confusion at this time will be playing out on these levels where you're feeling absolutely positive and radiant and spiritual and you're vibing at a higher octave and suddenly you're going to attract unwanted sexual attention it's because they are asleep and they don't understand the power of the spirituality and the only power that they are attracted to is sexuality. It's all that the sleeping ones know. So they're going to approach you materially. Sometimes this might be um, in the form of smoking marijuana, which is associated with the devil card. And this is the highest form of spirituality for some people is getting high. And they think that that is all there is to getting that deep spirituality 
and they don't quite know any other roads to take. Even though this is one road to God, like there are millions of roads to God, we are seeing a trend where people are being sexually explicit where maybe they wouldn't have before. And they're feeling free and open to do that as your energy is becoming free and open as a spiritual person. And there's, it's not quite a dichotomy because it's all related. Your Kundalini energy is the source of your sexual force and energy and power and charisma. And it's also the, the seat of your spiritual life in your physical body. When you raise your Kundalini up to your crown, that is the deepest um, uh, initiation, the first deep initiation that people receive spiritually. And also this is when you have an orgasm, especially when it's an or a whole body orgasm. And especially when you are in love, it's the same force. It's the same energy. And so this is why a lot of unwanted sexual <laughs> Tension and attention might be coming your way when you are becoming more and more spiritual. And like, while you think of yourself as a virgin, all these other devil people, like materialistic people are looking at you like, Hey, baby. <laughs> so it's like really interesting, right? All right. According to the tarot reference, power, sexuality, ambition, and enlightenment. See? Sexuality and enlightenment in one card. Weird, right? The devil's not as frightening a card as, an, as uh, you would imagine or what you think it means. It just means bondage, but it means the bondage to metaphoric and infernal. The, with this card, you're called to look beyond superficial appearances and go deep, deep, deep into the truth and meaning of a situation. Also, you're asked to remember that when you're feeling restrained you nearly always hold the keys to your own freedom. Don't give up hope. You can oh, the door to hell. It's always open. Don't get stuck. It's important for you to remember that no matter what your situation is, you always have the options to choose. First things first, don't let other people tell you that your options are limited. If you come to that conclusion, be sure that you're coming to it on your own. Regardless, it will be crucial to remember that you can free yourself from whatever restrictions are holding you back at any time you choose to do so. You have the feeling now that you're not in control of your life. Sometimes this does happen as a result of your own actions, but more often it's just a byproduct of being inactive, a byproduct of inaction. So take action, take whatever steps you can to give yourself the feeling, however slight of being in control. Even if it's merely making a choice on what you're going to have for dinner, small steps are important too. <laughs> All right, four of wands. Now, four always relates back to the emperor. So that's the second um, emperor related uh, card that, we're, that we've gotten. Okay, and this is good. This is in our th next three months. This is our, our hopes and fears. So mentally... It looks like very positive. It's a good card. So let's see what God has to say. It does say um, perfection. And it's a very positive card. I like It's like a monkey energy in this card with a, a, a kind of peridot green. It's my burst down colored background. I like it. It's kind of a color of new, renew, spring, life, you know. So in three months. Uh, God, can you tell us more about this? This is the renewed in joie de vivre card. <laughs> it's when you're able to see all of your projects either starting or coming to fruition, or your ideas are formulating in a way in which our, it, it, the outcome is going to be amazing and positive. Everything that you hope for is starting to happen as a direct result of your walking your path walking your walk, talking your talk, being on the right road to your own spirituality. So we see that you are getting your creative ideas and things are flowing. And this is an extremely positive card. Keep it up. Keep up the good work. We are proud of you. 
and we're always giving you energy and the impetus to continue. Anything else? No. Okay. In the deck, it says, Celebration, blessings, harmony, bountiful harvest. Ooh. And this is September, so October, November, December. So by Christmas time. <laughs> by Christmas time. <laughs> nice. The Four of Wands often indicates that with, that you may be attending a special event. One, <laughs> I'm thinking ugly Christmas sweater party, but that's just me. <laughs> One that will be way more fun than you're anticipating. So go and have a good time. Business is likely to be going very well at this time, and you're going to be proud of yourself. There's our mental health part. This is being proud of yourself and what you've been able to accomplish, right? And others will also be proud of you at this time. Although this is a very positive card in a reading, it also shows you need to keep your wits about you. You deserve and you should treat yourself to some fun, but know that you are still in a, in a building up phase and now is not the time to rest completely on your laurels. Is that what we're calling it these days? <laughs> this, card, this card can also sometimes mean that you will be moving your place of residence. Oh, you guys, I keep feeling I'm going to be moving right before Christmas and into my new house. And I just, I keep feeling it and I'm just, I'm so excited about it. All right, our final outcome for the whole reading is the Queen of Pentacles. Queen of Pentacles. Pentacles are good. Queens are good. We love them all. So let's see. What does this have to say <laughs> for ourselves? God, do you want to talk to us about the Queen of Pentacles? The answer is yes. <laughs> you are going to be the queen of your own domain. Everything that you've wanted, prosperity-wise, abundance, and when we say abundance, we mean in all areas, um, having good communication, relationships with your family and friends, as well as physical money and, and possessions, but not material possessions as much. By this card, the Queen of Pentacles, she's able to manage money. And I'm hearing like, the, like a mofo. <laughs> Queen of Pentacles, she's able to manage money. And she is really good at what she does. So mentally, on a mental health level, what this would mean is, God, that you're going to be in charge of every single thing in your world that suddenly the mental clarity is going to come and you're going to be 100% on it. You are going to be on top of things in your life, in your home, in your family, in everything, because your mental health is going to be much better based on focus and mental clarity and a lot of you are discovering ways to meditate and biofeedback and mindfulness and all of these things were mentioned before. All of these things are helpful. Even if you do meditation or hypnosis or self-hypnosis or listening to a quick meditation online every now and again, you're going to be able to reroute your mind in ways that are going to serve you to bring you the abundance that you need. All right. So according to this, it says generous perseverance, prosperity, fertility, ooh, sensibility. The Queen of Pentacles, like all the court cards, often stands for an actual person. So, of course, in this case, it'd be a woman with dark hair and dark eyes. But she's not always the case. It might not be a person. It might be you, of course. So... This can represent energetic influences in our lives. So the energy of the Queen of Pentacles is archetypically feminine, and she stands for hearth, home, and motherhood. This will indicate that you are spending time, money, and energy on your home. Gain it to be more comfortable. This is a good thing, provided that you don't take too much debt on. So be careful about that. People will be looking to you for insight and or advice. You will be able to help them if you are so inclined. And this is a time period when you can get a lot accomplished. So that sounds like we're doing well mental health wise, right? <laughs> so concludes the end of the mental health reading for the new moon for the human collective. And I wanted to thank you guys. Thank you for being on this wonderful, remarkable journey of ascension with me. 
I'm glad I'm not doing it alone. And I wanted to say thank you to those of you who wrote me today. I got a couple messages, but so far I've not gotten a single ghost story. I need ghost stories for Halloween for metaphysical ghost speak coming up on October 31st. And I'm going to need your stories about Santa Claus and Christmas miracles because I want to have a magical spiritual December and I want to celebrate that. And also, if you have anything surrounding Diwali or Hanukkah, you know, it doesn't always have to be, um, you know, Christian based. Okay. And, and my stories about Santa Claus are not Christian based because I'm not a Christian, but Santa Claus, I do believe in him. So I've got some amazing stories, but I want to hear your stories and I want to hear your miracles. So any holiday related miracle, we will put that in for December as well. And, um, and I mean, things that are like supernaturally, paranormally miraculous where you're just like, whoa, that was definitely a miracle. You know, I don't mean just finding a dollar on the sidewalk cause someone might've dropped it. I mean, where like massive things happen. So if you have anything like that, I want to hear it. I know everyone does too. <laughs> anyway, you can always write me at metaphysical soul speak at gmail.com or send me a voice message at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical. But that's all I got to say about that guys. Um, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the donations. Um, I've been given uh, messages that, um, new people want to send me donations, just send it through PayPal to the email. And thank you. I appreciate all the support and the help and the love. I really need it so I could keep going so that I could help you guys keep going on your spiritual journey. <laughs> so that's it. That's all I got to say for now. I'm going to go to bed. I am burning up because I'm got, I've got a lot of cosmic energy flowing through me right now. And I'm going to go meditate and, uh, hopefully have a nice long sleep. And I hope that you have a good day or good night, wherever and wherever you are in the world right now. Just be at peace. and Don't forget to take a moment, take a breath, take a step back and feel your true divine self. Signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes of the holy fifth dimension. Until next time, guys, peace. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.